So if you don't already know, there's been a recent supply chain attack with this polyfill.io service. I want to kind of talk about what this issue is and just give my opinions on this ecosystem. I think there's a lot of issues with the ecosystem that a lot of developers don't even think about. So let's first talk about what this issue is. Basically, there is a polyfill.io website, a domain, which is hosting a service that has a CDN where people who have websites can basically grab scripts. And what those scripts do is they help give additional functionality to older browsers. So as JavaScript evolves over time, new features are added to it. And so your front end has more capabilities, but often browsers lag behind and older versions of browsers don't have these new features. So there's something called a polyfill where you basically load in a script and it kind of acts like adding in that functionality into the older browsers so you have these new features. The issue with this is that a lot of websites basically pointed to a CDN to load in these polyfills. And there's been a recent exploit where basically people have been modifying the code that's sent back from that CDN and causing people's web pages to basically redirect to like sports betting sites and other malicious things. So this is a pretty serious exploit, right? You don't want to log into your bank account and get redirected to a sports betting site or whatever else they could potentially do with these JavaScript scripts that they're embedding directly into the working application. And I think this is more of an issue if you have like an index.html file and you have a script tag and you're pointing to a CDN. Like I remember back in the day we used Bower and there's also like CDN.js. And this is another way that you can basically quickly bring in, for example, Tailwind CSS and like just add it to your page real quick. If you don't want to bring in like a bundler, you don't want to bring in some type of build process. This is an approach. Personally, I would say you shouldn't be doing this. You should probably be using some type of bundler with some type of version locking because what this is allowing your websites to do is if CDNJS ever gets exploited or if someone were to come in and sell this and like a third party Chinese company like happened to Polyfill decides they want to inject a bunch of malware into these various packages, you don't have control over that because your users, when they load your website, it's going to fetch scripts directly from CDNJS and start running that code. Now, I think there's ways you can like add like integrity checks on the scripts that are loaded in your browser so that it actually verifies like the hash of the file contents matches what you expect. But overall, I mean, I would probably say you should be using a build process. Everything should be version locked so that you have a nice, repeatable, deployable piece of software. All right. But this isn't about CDNJS. This is just about like, be careful where you're pulling in scripts. Like if you're not actually bundling your scripts in your package JSON modules, you have to be very, very cautious of like that third-party service that you're pulling scripts in because you need to trust them. And if you can't trust them, I probably wouldn't use them. So I guess the takeaway from this, if you look through your code base and you have a polyfill.io link anywhere, like you're pointing to the CDN, you should probably get rid of it and get off of it and figure out a way to uh, not have that stuff happen. I think a lot of people love supporting older browsers, but honestly, like people just need to update their stuff. Like at some point you need to cut them off and say, you know what, this is just not going to be supported. And if your project manager or someone on your team is saying, no, we have to support these older browsers, I think as an engineer, like you have to have the responsibility to push back and say, no, doing this is causing more complexity and security issues on our project. Okay, so with all that being said, I do want to talk a little bit about this ecosystem because I don't think this is just an issue with the Polyfill IO service. Let's just open up any project and I want to kind of bash the JavaScript ecosystem a little bit and try to just make sure that you're thinking about these things when you're developing. So let me just give you an example. I have a very basic Next.js application. It literally just has like a couple of sign-in features and that's it. Now let's look at all the packages that were needed to get this set up. Okay, if you scroll through here, we have all these different dependencies. Some of them are for auth, some of them are for com the component library, some of them are for styling, some of them are for sending out emails, etc. And from the projects I've been on, this is a very, very small subset of third-party dependencies that I have seen in a project. Now, when you start bringing in third-party dependencies, there's a couple of things you need to be concerned about. First of all, when you have these little carrots here, you're basically saying, you know what, anytime I do an npm install, just grab the latest patch version. How certain are you that someone didn't inject some type of malicious thing when you do that patch version update? Because there are certain things you can run in your terminal. Like for example, you can say npm audit or you can run sneak. And there's, I think other ones built in like GitHub as well. So npm audit, notice that I have four high severity vulnerabilities in these packages. Now remember, these are only security vulnerabilities that people happen to find and report. Is there a chance that there's tons of vulnerabilities in all of these packages? Absolutely. I'm, I'm guessing there probably is tons and people just haven't found them yet. And so for every third-party library you bring in, 
you're assuming risk. You're saying that, you know what, I, I trust the maintainers of this project and I hope they don't ever add anything malicious. And this can happen to large projects. This can happen to small projects that are ran by one person. For example, I'm using Lucia Auth on this project. And this is an Auth library basically maintained by one person who lives in, I don't know, Japan or something. If any point he becomes malicious or his account gets hacked, he could easily just inject some type of security vulnerability and do bad things with it. So you, you need to ask yourself, hey, like, is it worth assuming the risk, trusting these third-party maintainers, trusting this third-party library, so that I'm pretty certain that they're not going to just inject some type of malware when my users hit my web page and try to you know, verify their authorization or authentication. And so another thing that's very important to point out is that although I only have like these third-party packages defined, let me show you actually how many third-party modules you have. Because when you install a third-party library, that third-party library might be dependent on 30 other third-party libraries. For example, let's look at Next.js. And let's see how many dependencies Next.js depends on. So if you go over here, it has seven dependencies. So not too many has a couple of dependencies, but now let's click into any of these. Let's click into, for example, Busboy. Let's see how many dependencies this has. This has one. Let's click on Stream Search. This has zero, okay? So that happens to be a very small dependency uh, graph over there. Okay, let's check out Post CSS. This has three dependencies, right? And so if you keep scrolling through and diving into these dependencies, some of them depend on a bunch of other packages. And so at any point, if one of these dependencies or subdependencies has a malicious piece of code added to it, I guarantee you're not going to know about it. Like you're not going to figure it out unless the community that's really maintaining that open source project is super due diligent. And now if you look at the dev dependencies, Next.js has 200 dev dependencies. They grant that some of these are probably owned by them themselves. But if any of these dev dependencies, I mean, like imagine you do an NPM install on your machine and it decides it wants to scan all your files inside of your project and look for like uh, keys and ship them off somewhere. That's something that can happen. You can write pre-install scripts in your package JSON and have it run shell scripts. And so any of these packages could potentially do things on your machine when they're installing and run malicious code. Another good way to see all your dependencies is look at your package lock file and just scroll through. Like every time you see a node module like this, that's another dependency that your project depends on. So keep scrolling. I mean, this is like probably gonna be 20,000 lines of code. It's 13,000 lines of code of third-party dependencies. And so can you trust all these? Honestly, probably not, probably not. And um, you can also just look at your node modules. Like when you do an NPM install, like this is how many node modules are actually needed to host a UI, to build a UI, okay? And so I'm not trying to bash Node, although I kind of am. I just want you to be aware that like blindly using dependencies and blindly just using Node, maybe at some point we should reconsider, do we need all these dependencies? Is there an approach that we can do that allows us to implement almost as much functionality without having to depend on so many random third-party libraries that potentially go unmaintained and then like there's security issues in them and then no one's actually updating those uh, libraries for the security issues, etc. So with all this being said, I mean, I have made some jokes on Twitter about maybe HTMX isn't such a bad idea. If you look at HTMX, let's see how many dependency it has. Zero. I'm pretty sure it's just one script that you run on your front end. It gives you a bunch of JavaScript functionality out of the box. Now, I do think there's some like user experience things that are going to be a little bit more difficult and maybe even impossible to do with HTMX. But at the same time, if you really think about it, you could have a simple Go server that's hosting an index file that imports one script, maybe two if you're using Tailwind, and have the exact same or close to almost the exact same working website with two JavaScript dependencies. So these are things I think we need to think more about in this Node ecosystem. I think we're very fast to just npm install everything. Oh, we found this little feature that adds what we need. Let's npm install it. Well, you probably just added a vulnerability to your project and you don't even know about it. So keep that in mind. Just want to make a little video about this and kind of rant about uh, the state of front-end development, the JavaScript ecosystem, developing with Node on the back end. I won't lie, it has a couple of rough edges about it that no one really talks about. So other than that, have a good day. Happy coding.